Hi there, how's it going? So, I haven't recorded for my podcast in quite a long time, and I started a YouTube channel, uh, only uploaded one video, which was less than a minute long, and yeah, it's been two weeks since I uploaded that video, and probably over two months since the last episode on Mind Universe, my podcast. Now, I have been wrestling with the thought on why have I not been able to get back to it and continue to produce for the channels that I have. One of them a podcast and the other is a YouTube channel. So I've been thinking that I have audio and I have video and I want to try to find the harmony between the two now for the longest time when i say the longest time i actually mean since i started the podcast which is over a year now i always aimed to bring value in the content that i provide i seek to make it be about a specific subject where i address problems, I mention struggles, um, and I provide solution, or usually, usually, the approach that I take is one of an adventurous uh, nature, where we go exploring the subject, me and the listener, and I talk about it. For example, let's say, the subject of perfectionism, how you can be a perfectionist and how that is something that hinders you it it really locks you it makes you unable to do anything because you are bound by the idea that you have to provide something that is perfect in every aspect Otherwise, you wouldn't do it. And I would go on that adventure with the listener. I would address how I deal with it, how the listener deals with it, how you deal with it, and how can you tackle it? How do you fix it? How do you overcome it? And yeah, so that's been the approach that I do for ever since I started the podcast, Mind Universe. Um, and I love how I chose that name uh, because to me it's it's as if you are swimming in the universe of the mind because you know our thoughts they they are vast and there are so many things that don't always uh, manifest themselves in the real world um, you could go through your life day after day Uh, tackling the things that are around you, uh, having to go to school, having to deal with the people around you, uh, having to solve the problems that life has dealt for you without ever um, getting to express what's within you, what's within your mind. You just are perpetually stuck in this loop where you keep doing these things and before you know it, years have passed your life has passed or that's that's perhaps a very simple way of putting it Uh, before you know it you are so immersed in the world around you that you let go of the world within you and to me mind universe allows us me you to go swimming in space the space of the mind now the problem that i've been dealing with because here's the thing i do have several subjects in mind but my problem is that they slip away between my fingers even when i write them down they just sometimes they are there and i'm able to talk about them and i do talk about them either with friends with colleagues and with people around me sometimes i write them on social media or or on on microsoft word whatever i just write them down and 
when I do this setting, you know, when when I turn on the lighting, when I set up my microphone and I have a camera in front of me right now, they just go away. And here's actually another example. Sometimes when I'm driving in my car, I find you know that flow of creativity that goes through you i find it immersing me i'm at at, a, at such a bad timing i i feel like i want to talk i want to record i want to do this but in my car and i've probably done that before um but the, the setting isn't 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 optimal you know it's not pleasant to listen to it's not pleasant to look at because it's night outside and it's it's a car now obviously that's perhaps a perfectionist nature to want everything to be set up right to have a camera to have a microphone to have the lights i have lights here and it's it's so easy to just think you don't have to do it perfectly, just do it. And and that can be admirable as well. You see people who do it that way, they don't care about the surrounding, they, they just go and be themselves. But the problem with that is dealing with it is not the same as seeing it manifest and happen. Sometimes you can do it and, and it works, but most of the time when you are wrestling with it it's it's not so easy so i'll give you an example you know when you see someone deal with a difficult situation and and i i'll tell you what's on my mind right now i finished watching uh, a series it's very popular if you're listening to me you probably have watched it as well uh, squid game it's a korean uh, series it's available on netflix now you see them and i'm, I'm not going to spoil anything don't worry you see them go through things I'll, I'll keep it as vague as possible by the way and and you would think if i were there if i were in their place i'd be able to do it better i'd be uh, i'd be very articulate very smart and you plan in your head how you would have behaved if you were in in the situation that someone else is in but the problem is when you are in that situation there are so many factors outside affecting you that you are not thinking the same way you are when you are watching behind the screen um, i'll give you an example if you're someone who drives a car especially if you just recently started driving when you are being taught to drive uh, it, it seems easy it seems like okay i got it i just have to put the gear in drive and hold the steering wheel and stay in my lane and and you know it it seems to me easy and natural but when it's in a real life situation and there's traffic and people who are being reckless and they're honking at you and you you see them uh, steering towards you you're gonna panic and and there's a high probability that you're gonna just suddenly press on the brakes out of fear you don't know what to do or or you know take a sudden turn and and it's it's such a scary experience um, but it's so different between practicing and being in the actual situation that's basically the case i remember when i was a kid we had so we we had some sort of a farm my uncle he, he had a farm for sheep and he adopted two puppies and and they were guard puppies they they, they were not trained for human interaction that much they were just there to guard from intruders now i walked buy those two puppies and I, and I was probably 12 or 11 no actually nine it doesn't matter anyway so i walked by them and i wasn't aware that those two puppies were there and of, of course i was a kid and to me they looked bigger than they would now and so i walked by them and i looked down and they look up at me and there was a moment of silence and i didn't i didn't know what to do because they were new to me and I was new to them. I, I wasn't, I haven't interacted with them before. So there was no presupposition that they are friendly or not friendly. We don't recognize each other basically. And, and when they looked at me, both of them 
barked really loudly and and that triggered a fear in me a primal fear and and i just started running uncontrollably the way they the way they do it in the movies you know and and i was flailing i was like moving my arms and legs and standing up and falling down and just like it it was such a weird behavior i i fear just engulfed my whole body now obviously if if as a kid even if someone told me what would you do in that situation i'd be saying or anyone would probably be saying uh, i'd just calmly walk away because i know dogs uh, can smell fear or whatever or i would just look at them and show them that i'm not scared so that they wouldn't attack me it's it's different when it suddenly happens to you when you are not prepared so that's that's basically the difference between uh doing something when you are in the situation and and saying that if i was in that situation i would have behaved better than someone else or if when you see someone who has behaved in such a an adamant way you would be like you could just do it the same way they did um don't be so sure of that <laughs> so since i've started talking and believe me getting started with a microphone and talking like this even though i've done it over 30 40 times now mind you not all my recordings were exported and published some of them were just kept as drafts so even though i've done this for a little over 40 times now i still find difficulty tackling it even though i'm not new to it i'm not new to recording anyway so i'm i'm glad that i was able to get this far talking to to you now i'll tell you what i've been up to recently and there is there is something good in being a perfectionist at least to me personally it pushes you to always seek perfection and and being aware that it's okay if you don't reach it helps a lot because you, you will not just give up and be like hey i can't reach perfect so i'll give up on good no you you would think i'll aim for perfect but i'll be okay with being good so the the perfect goal pushes you towards it and if you don't reach it you accept where you are so it's it's there's a balance and 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 i always think perhaps i don't say it enough um, to people i always say that the details matter even if you hear something that comes off as a cliche or if you hear let's say a quote or a, a saying the details matter if you if you put it in a broad sense it comes off as shallow but when you dig under and you focus on the details you find valuable meaning so anyway i've been learning how to to produce content that is worthy of consuming let's say i've been learning softwares that are used for cinematography i've been study, uh, studying color theory and a, a little bit of information about me for the past five years i've always been someone who uses black and white when i take pictures it's in black and white when i paint it's in black and white even when i do artwork that is in color i end up desaturating it just to stick to being in black and white now even though a part of me loves colors and and i love the the metaphor that comes with colors i'll give you an example you know how life can be gray black and white there is no color and then something beautiful happens or you meet someone who is so fascinating and they add color to your life now color here it it adds value it adds beauty and it brings magic to a dull existence let's say so i love colors but i've always been 
putting myself in this narrow frame where I have to always fit in the black and white persona. Not that it's a bad thing, it's beautiful. Black is beautiful. It's majestic, it's deep, it's mysterious. I love black and I love, like I understand the reason I always chose black even, black and white. The same with white. White is purity, it's it's virtuous. When I got to learning color theory and broadening my color palettes, let's say, outside of black and white, I was faced with a resistance within my own self that was saying, you always are a black and white person. Why are you using colors? So it felt like I had to be true to an older self, or I had to be true to an image that I've always presented. Now, to me, having been like that all the time, I, I got to reflect a bit and I realized that I was limiting myself. Uh, and, and I was, how do I say this? I was abiding to an idea that others would expect of me. Everyone, well, everyone who knew me at least. Or rather, everyone who thought they knew me. Because a lot of people who do know me were not surprised when I was becoming colorful, let's say. I felt like I was abiding by this idea that some people had of me. And 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 it's, it's such a dangerous thing. And I'm not blaming those people. No, it's it's me abiding by an idea that they had of me. And, and by not abiding by it, they will not hold it against me. They would just be surprised for a while and then they accept the new idea. It's fine. But it's something that you do internally. You abide by others' idea of you. I'll give you an example that's unrelated to colors and black and white. Let's say someone or, or someone's uh, group of a social group have always thought of you as someone who is angry or frustrated and and anything you say they would be like hey calm down all right calm down now even though you're not angry you you find yourself set up against an expectation of you and now this is your ground zero to them and and you have to you have to navigate your way based on this perspective hey uh no i'm not angry i'm 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 and then you start defending yourself and proving to yourself uh, proving to them that you are not angry um so in that example the angry example based on that example when you don't have to abide by that uh perception and projection of you um you allow yourself the freedom to not give it value in your own self. So that same group of people, let's say, if they say, hey, we expect you to be angry, you don't have to defend yourself. You'd be like, no, it's fine, I'm not. And then you would go on and say whatever you have to say and act however you within wants, want to act. So yeah, I've been learning color theory and I've been using it. There's there's a software called DaVinci Resolve and I've been I've I've basically learned how to use it. It's very complicated, especially the uh, color correction part. I'm still learning that. It's it's so deep, but it's so beautiful as well. Also, I've been trying to juggle so many things. Um, I have my writings and I've been trying to get into writing in Arabic as well, which is another thing that I, I was limiting myself by only writing in English, even though I love writing in English, I will not stop doing that. But even though sometimes I wanted to write in Arabic, I was like, no, people would not take that. They want me to write in English. But the beautiful surprise was when I started writing in Arabic, I, I, the, the response that I was getting is so overwhelmingly positive and beautiful. So anyway, uh, I've been juggling 
writing and and writing in Arabic, also translating my own writings in Arabic. Sometimes I try to not make it word by word, rather I translate the meaning and the value and, and add the beauty of the Arabic language in whatever it is that I wrote. Also, I have my 3D artwork, I have my uh, workouts, calisthenics and gymnastics, and I've been moving into my new apartment and I also have my job. So with everything that goes on in your life you realize just how valuable time is and how limited you are in your resources be it your energy your time your focus your dedication even i'll give you an example you know when you have a set amount of time of the day where you do a specific kind of job and you would think all right you have the evening to yourself you would think that the moment you leave work and you have the you have the evening free that you'd have all that time but no you would be needing to recharge you would need to relax and take some time off so the recovery period in itself it it requires of you and and it's it's such a i don't know how to describe this it's not just that you have work to do and then the time off is work is time that you're not doing anything in no it's time where you need to rest otherwise you would be burned out so yeah time is such a valuable resource and and you could reach a point where you just try to allocate your time and effort uh, by prioritizing the things that you have and and that in itself even when you plan ahead even when you try to do these things it's still it can be overwhelming and yeah to me that has been the case and i've talked to several people and it seems to be the case with many of them you feel overwhelmed and you feel distracted all the time and you feel like you're running a rat race and you keep running and running and running and you lose track of time and you lose track of yourself as well <sighs> but yeah i'll try to bring value through what i'm doing here through this recording and through talking to you i genuinely want to bring light into this part of what you go through what we go through and yeah i'll keep doing this and another thing that i've been learning is how to produce content in a way that's uh, captivating and beautiful and worthy of consuming let's say i've been learning how to make a rolls and b rolls and make um videos that are worth watching recently i've worked on a project for a friend of mine um, and and it, it was a short video probably less than 30 seconds but it took me two days of working on and and just the whole intro and the calligraphy and the logos and the way the, the the shots were being placed and and the way it rhymes with the music and the way it tells a story you know the it takes you from um uh, indoors and then outdoors and then inside of a vehicle and then you find yourself in a place where there's beautiful lighting and then you have the ending with uh, uh, the, the logo again and and the information that you need and and the whole thing it's it's a creative work and working on that it's uh, it's enriching in a way it adds value anyway uh i i find that i'm rambling on at this point also i've been reflecting on the value of my podcast and and one aspect of it from the feedback that i've been getting is it's been helping people it's it's relaxing it's calming and i still am figuring out how 
that works because I can't judge it as the host and the one who talks. I just do my best to provide content that is worthy, but I still need the feedback. And the feedback that I've been getting is it makes people who deal with hardship able to deal with it better. It makes them feel understood and it gives them hope. And and that to me is very valuable. It's to realize that I'm doing something that is helping someone out there. It, it's 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 something that I'm grateful for. So I want to keep doing that. I want to have my podcast continue to do that, to reach out and let you know that you are not alone, you are understood, and that there is a voice out there who speaks out for you. I'll keep doing that and I'll keep trying hard. So yeah, I'll talk to you next time. Take care.